Hello and welcome to another Tuesday Tips. I'm Pam Keslauskas, and today we're going to be talking in our continuing series on mastering the MOR about your management response. So you've had your MOR, you've gotten through that, it's been 30 days and now you have your MOR report. What do you do with that and how do you respond? First thing to know is that you have 30 days to respond to any of the findings in your MOR. You're going to detail any of the actions you've taken to respond to the findings, and you're going to want to document that with pictures or copies of certifications or whatever it is that you need to do to show how you've addressed the findings. When you are doing your written response, there are some things to keep in mind that will make that response easier to review and will show clearly how you've addressed any findings. One important thing to note is that there is no set format that HUD requires for your response. So anything you see on the slides today, anything we talk about is going to be a suggestion. There are some key principles to keep in mind when you're doing a response. You are going to want to reference the property, the contract number, and the date of your MOR. Remember that your relationship manager, the reviewer that comes out to do your MOR, is probably handling several MORs for that month. So you want to make sure it's clear to them which MOR that you're responding to. You want to be doing something to clearly identify the finding. Most of them are going to be either unit numbers or policies. You want to make sure that they know how to tell the difference between the Unit 3 finding and the Unit 7 finding. You're going to make sure that your documents are referenced to the finding. So if you have, say, 10 documents attached to that response, you want to somehow indicate which document goes with which finding. And it's always best to send a complete response, not a little at a time. So when you're identifying your finding, you want to make sure you provide unit number, certification, and the issue. And you want to reference what corrective action was necessary. So it makes it easy for your reviewer to go, OK, here's the certification I needed for this finding for this unit. It's always a good idea to make sure that the attachment order, the order of the documents you're including, is in the same order, that the documents are in the same order as your finding summary. So if the finding summary is Unit 3, Unit 5, Unit 6, you want to make sure that those attachments are Unit 3, Unit 5, Unit 6, so that it's easy to reference the documents to the particular finding. And as I noted, you want to send those responses when they're complete rather than sending them a little at a time. Should you have trouble getting a corrective action completed because, for instance, the resident's been away and they're not expected to come back in time for you to get the response by the deadline, you can go ahead and reach out to your relationship manager. They may be able to grant you an extension for that response. Here's what the findings are going to look like. So when you get your report, the findings are going to be noted with the HUD 9834 item number. So that's the, the question number in that form. The unit or location, the condition, what the issue is, the cause. For instance, income wasn't calculated correctly because they didn't include income from assets. The effect. Did it change the tenant rent? Is HUD paying more or less than they should have? And what correction action is needed? So here's is just an example of what it would look like. You have the finding. In this case, it was a, a finding in the tenant file review. That's TFR. D10 refers to the question and the unit and certification number. Condition was income from assets was not calculated correctly. You have criteria. That's going to reference the part of the HUD guidance that this finding comes from. In this case, it's paragraph 5-7F. The cause, 
So the reason you got the condition was that management didn't add income from an investment account. The effect was tenant underpaid rent. And the corrective action is going to be a certification correction. So that's what these are going to look like. So when I do my response, I want to make sure that I reference all of that clearly enough so that the reviewer can go, okay, that was this finding. Here's the response. Here's the document I needed. There's a variety of ways that we've seen people do this. Some will restate the whole thing and then just add management response. Others will just identify the unit, the certification, the finding, and then detail the actions. Some will also just take a copy of that findings page, make notations on that, and then attach documents. There, again, is no required format. You just want to make sure that your response is clear enough so that the reviewer can ensure that they give you credit for all the things you responded to and that they can close the MOR for you as quickly as possible. One of the issues that we see in responses is that the actions taken or the documents submitted don't clearly match the exact corrective action needed. So if we say there needs to be a corrected AR, what you need to do is correct that AR, submit it through tracks and then attach that signed corrected AR. So just make sure that the documents you're attaching, the actions that you go through, match the corrective action that we've asked you for. If you have questions, be sure to reach out. Now, occasionally you get some unusual situations. Let's say we have a resident in Unit 101. There was an IR in the file that removed employment, but there was no supporting documentation there. So there was a finding issued for including that income and fixing it because there was no documentation that the income had stopped. When management looked at it, they actually found that indeed the employment income did stop and the initial interim that they did was correct. In that case, you're going to want to make sure that you are giving a narrative of all of your efforts, all of the documentation you obtained and why it wasn't necessary to do exactly what was asked for. So I've got some sample responses for you. In this case, we had income from assets not calculated correctly. The corrective action was to process a retroactive correction to the AR. And the management response here is correction has been completed and sent through tracks. See documentation attached. So in this case, they opted for restating the finding condition and corrective action. Here's another sample. They just listed the finding and advised of what documentation was attached. So we have unit A3, annual research from February 1st, 24, asset income, AR correction attached. Now this is not as clear, but it still gives a list of what finding it was, what we did to correct it, and what documentation is included. Again, with your attachments, you want to link that document to a finding. So the best way to do that is probably to label your attachments in some way. You can put it up in the corner, something that says, this is exactly what this is attached to. Preferably in the same order as the findings are listed. It makes it a lot easier to locate that and link it to the corresponding finding. And if it's a long document, for instance, we told you you needed to revise your tenant selection plan, please highlight the relevant portion of the document that you had to correct. Just makes it a lot faster for your reviewer to take a look at it and close your management review out for you. Some tips for sending documents, reduce sized PDFs if you know how to do that are always helpful. If you don't know how to do that, I am sure that there is somebody in your company or your IT person that does know how to do that. Make sure you are listing your property name or your contract number in the subject line. If you have to send multiple emails because the attachments are large, find some way of indicating that or letting us know that we should be looking for multiple emails. For example, MOR response one of three, two of three. 
it's a good idea to get delivery receipts. Please don't do read receipts because not every system allows read receipts. You can also turn those off. So the red receipt, you may not have a great response with. Delivery receipts will tell you that your email went out and got to the person it was supposed to get to. With very large attachments, if you're sending particularly a lot of them, either use multiple emails or contact your reviewer, your relationship manager, for the best way to send those to them. Once your reviewer has taken a look at your response, they will either respond to you with any items still needing attention, with a deadline for that, or a notification that they've closed out your MOR and you're all set to the next time. You're going to receive that within 30 days of sending the response to Navigate. And please note that if you do not respond to Navigate's request after an MOR, your non-response has to be noted with HUD. So you want to make sure that you are responding to any findings that you have. Remember, please feel free to ask questions. Reach out to us if you need us. We're here to help you. We want you to be successful. So if you don't understand what is required of you, please feel free to reach out to us. So that's going to end it for today in terms of covering your response. What would you like to see on our next Tuesday tips? I'd love to hear your suggestions, anything that you're struggling with or have questions on, or anything that you feel like it might be helpful to review again. You can always reach out to us if you have questions, concerns, or suggestions. You can reach out to me or to Vicki. Our contact information is on the slide. And have a great day, and we will see you on the next Tuesday Tips.